Hello everyone, Welsh Witch here. Um, I made a video a few days ago which basically said I would now be making this video. Um, in the last video I put up a thing about um, this horrible Facebook page and I hope that you guys had a chance to look at that and sign it. Um, but we won't talk about that because I talked about that in my last video. I said in this video I would be talking about some books that I've purchased. So um, the first one a lot of you have probably seen this, uh, A Witch's Bible, The Complete Witch's Handbook by Janet and Stuart Farrar. Um, Farrar, I don't know why I said it like that. <laughs> so this is um, this is kind of like a, a bread and butter. It's, as it says, The Complete Witch's Handbook. It's got a lot of different things in it. Um, it sort of is split up into, I think it's two separate books within it as well, each with their own contents pages. And I will try and find the first so I can give you um, an idea of what it's about. So, yeah, part one is the Sabbaths and rights of birth, marriage and death. And if we go to, here we go, we go to the contents page. We've got here um, the frame, uh, opening ritual, great bride, the closing ritual, um, that this is more to do um, with if you're a Wiccan and if you're in a coven. It does tell you um, if you are a solitary or a head, a head, a hedge witch, um, how to uh, work the spell without the presence of a coven. But a lot of it is mainly aimed at uh, coven work, which I suppose is the only um, crux for it if you're not in a coven, which I am not. Um, not the covens aren't for everyone um particularly me i i prefer to work alone i might occasionally do a spell with a friend but on the whole i'm not into the whole coven thing but you know it's not for everyone but that's the good thing about this book is it's it is mainly aimed at people who are in a coven but it does tell you well this is how you could go about the ritual or spell or whatever if you're not in a coven. Um, it's got all the Sabbaths here, so you've got Imbolc, Spring Equinox, Beltane, Midsummer, um, Lunasa, Autumn Equinox, Samhain and Yule. And then Birth, Marriage and Death, a Wiccaning, which is like a, a pagan christening, or in this case a Wiccan christening, a hand fasting, marriage and a requiem, which is of course a funeral. Um, and then if we skip ahead, it's, it's got the, you know, like the bibliography and um, index for it as well and then you've got part two which is principles rituals and beliefs of modern witchcraft and it's got uh, leaves from the books uh, book of shadows and you've got first degree initiation second and third consecrations the rest of the book of shadows um more wiccan rituals there's just a few bits and bobs the wiccan path um it's got all sorts of things in there there's uh, reincarnation, witchcraft and sex, uh, healing, spells, self-initiation, which is tools. Um, so it is, it's a really handy book. It's a, like I said, it's a handbook. Um, it is definitely more aimed at if you were to call yourself a Wiccan. Now, a lot of people I know um, tend to say, well, isn't doesn't paganism mean Wiccan? And it's not. It's kind of the way I look at it. I think the best way to explain it is um, within Christianity, you've got different parishes and segments and things. I mean, under the whole Christian banner, you've got you've got Catholicism, and um, then under people who actually class themselves as Christians, you've got um, Presbyterians, uh, Seven Day Adventists. Um, you know, you you've got all the different sects. That's the word I was looking for. Um, and I suppose Wicca is like a sect of paganism. Um, so this is a lot of it is aimed at um, if you're going to initiate yourself into the Wiccan read and if you're in a coven. But it is really good and handy to have for if you're not a Wiccan. Um, just as literally as a handbook as sort of, you know, if you need to know something really basic um, or run of the mill or you think, oh, you know, what... what what did that mean again? Or what was um, in bulk for again? And you just pick it up and it's all in here. It is a good book to have. Um, I haven't read it all yet, um, but when I've needed something so far, I've grabbed it and gone, oh, actually, that's turned out to be really handy. 
so that's my first book and I would I would recommend it even if you're not a Wiccan like myself I'm not a Wiccan um I class myself as pagan and I'm a solitary or a hedge witch you know a lot of people um a lot of people differ on that as well on the meaning of solitary and hedge witch um I prefer the title Hedwig, hedge witch just I was gonna call myself Hedwig then <laughs> apt but <laughs> um yeah, I prefer the title Hedge Witch to Solitary because Solitary just sounds a bit sad. Just like, oh yeah, I'm a Solitary Witch. I'm on my own. <laughs> but Hedge Witch is a bit nicer. Um, but call yourself what you want. <laughs> my second book, now this is this is the book that I was waiting to get for a long time. It's called, um, it's by Stephanie Woodfield. And it's called uh, Celtic Law and Spellcraft, Spellcraft of the Dark Goddess Invoking the Morrigan. Yay, and we all know how much I like the Morrigan. Um, it's been a really good book so far. The first couple of chapters are sort of like um, giving you a rundown on the Morrigan. Um, you've got part one, who is the Morrigan, the Celts, the Morrigan in Celtic mythology. Then part two, the three Morrigans, so because she has the three faces and the triple goddess. Um meeting Maka, meeting Bath, meeting Anu, the Trinity and additional connections. And then you've got part three, the faces of the Morrigan. When you get to that then, and part four as well, it kind of, um, it goes into different rituals and spells and stuff. And there's one I just wanted to share with you. Part four. So sorry for this, I should have found it before I started the video. Um, seasonal rituals, that's what I'm after. Three, four, three. I was going to um, try and do the seasonal ritual for um, Mabon or Mabon, depending on how you say it, because that is, of course, coming up. I think it's on the 23rd of September this year, because, you know, the autumn equinox. Um, but the only problem is with that one, if I can find it. Where is it? Ah, here we go, Mabon. Ebon. Um, it tells you um, what you need, and it's got it's got um, a few different things that might be harder to get hold of. Um, it's got a sword. Um, in some of these spells, it says that if you don't have a sword or an athame, that you can actually use a wand. So that's cool. As long as you have something to channel the energy. Um, there are some spells that are specific that you do need some sort of blade. So it might be good just to get yourself a little something. Um, but on the whole, you can tend to um, use a wand as long as you've got something to channel the energy, really. And then it says there's the Maka Herbal Blend. That's something it teaches you how to make earlier on in it. Crow Feather. Most of them have crow feathers because, of course, the crow is... Um, uh, familiar of the Morrigan and very much associated with her and I have been surrounded by them for the past like week or so loads and loads of crows and blackbirds anyway this salt cauldron of water uh, three acorns or hazelnuts green marker one apple chalice of wine or apple cider and then it's got all these different bits and bobs you've got to do um but I actually won't be able to do that because I don't have the many to get everything in time. Um, but I am going to do a sermon ritual, which it's got here. It's a really interesting ritual. Um, what you need for it is a cauldron, um, red, white and black candle, because they represent the Morrigan. You've got a green candle to represent Dagda. Um, Dagda was the god. Um, he was the... Uh, god of life and Sewan is when the Morrigan and Dagda reconnect so it's sort of that passing of life and death and rebirth and um just the uh you know the new initiation during the the night the the day of the dead as the Mexicans call it um but anyway <laughs> it's kind of like two halves of whole coming together yin and yang uh, then you've got a white candle to represent the ancestors and departed dead. Um, your favourite Morrigan or Samhain incense. I don't really have any other favourite incenses. The only incense I like is uh, Night Champa. Um, I might occasionally like another one, but on the whole, I'm just like, yeah, Night Champa. So that's, and that's always what I like when I um, pray at my Morrigan altar, which is by there. 
couldn't see my finger there, it's better. <laughs> okay, and then you've got one black feather, a sword, athame, or wand, chalice of water, and dish of salt. So that one's not too hard with the uh, getting stuff ready for it. Um, it. There's lots of different channeling you have to do through lighting candles and what have you. And then you, um, it's kind of like, cross. it's not that you're crossing beyond the veil, you're you're talking to people that have passed on because, of course, the veil is very, very thin on Samhain. Um I've got a video. Um, it wasn't uploaded on YouTube, uploaded on YouTube, and it was back when I used to just record off my phone. Um, if you go on my Facebook page, um, I'll actually put a link into the video here that I did on Samhain and sort of gives you a big background of info about Samhain and... Um, I do talk a bit about the veil being thin and about the day of the dead and stuff like that but I'll put a link here so you can see it and I'll put a link in the box below on YouTube so you can have a look um but yeah so this is so that you can um you can get in contact with loved ones or you can say in honor of my ancestors and just try and get in contact with your ancestors um if you don't want to speak to a specific one and it it reaffirms you not to be frightened as well and you know it's understandable why it might be frightening but it tells you not to worry it's okay um it also says that it's um where is it uh, it's good on for doing any divination or spell work and um there's a good uh, it's telling you that it's a good time to re-bless uh tarot cards or crystals or anything that you might use angel cards uh whatever whatever you use for divination or things like that um as a sort of, you know, just to re-bless them, kind of to cleanse them for another year. Um, there's a lot of people that kind of quibble over when the uh, pagan New Year is. Some say that it's um, Samhain, others say that it's Imbolc, some say that it's Yule. So there's a bit of a, there's a bit of a gap between, the, the, I think it that spans about what? three four months altogether so there's this kind of an unsurety and that end of the year crossing over into the new part so some people believe that Samhain is the end of the and um, you know marks the beginning of the pagan new year and that's why it's good to bless your um tarot cards and crystals and what have you ready for the new year ahead um but anyway that's my morrigan book and it's it's been great so far um excuse me and it's got some brilliant spells and rituals in it and I, uh, I went through and wrote down all the different ingredients for every single spell and stuff and I thought I'm going to start collecting now so I can um I'm just going to start buying everything so that I've got it here so that I've got all herbs because I've I'm a bit of a collector of old apothecary looking bottles and I think it's about time I filled them up I've actually got a an old like funky tea caddy thing here that I um, filled with crow feathers. I bought these off um, the internet, off eBay. They are rook feathers. I can get a nice decent one. I've put one up on my uh, Morrigan altar, of course. And here we go. We got. Oh, you can't see that next. To that. I'll hold it against my face. I'm nice and pale, so you can see it. Um, but yeah, there's my lovely crows, crow feathers, and there's a couple of rook ones in there as well. Um, so they can be good for different spells, usually for wafting incense around. Um, and of course, if you're working with the Morrigan, it's always good to have these about because, as I said, she is very much associated with crows. If you actually look on the front of this book, you probably won't be able to see it very well on here, but it's got different um, symbols for the animals that she's connected to. So you've got um, here is the crow or raven. Then here is an eel, she's connected to eels. Here you've got the wolf, and here the cow or sow. Um, no, not sow, sow is a pig. Um, cows. And, um, but yeah, the, um, and if you buy this book as well, in the beginning part, so it said it gives you the history, and it tells you all the stories of how and why she's connected to those animals. And it is, I think, the one of the best books uh, about the Morrigan for a, a source of information on the Morrigan. There are other books out there that I've had a little um, peruse at 
and they're not as informative there are some good ones but i'd say that this was definitely the best because it just gives you such a good rundown without babbling on like i do um <laughs> And it's got loads of good spells, loads of good rituals. It's just a really handy book to have if you are a follower of the Morrigan. And even if you're not, but you'd like to be able to um, work with her, it's still good from a starting point of view and a, a more um, intermediate or advanced point of view. It's brilliant. Um, a lot of people... Um, sorry, I've said um about 20 times. A lot of people uh, are a bit iffy about working with the Morrigan because she is a goddess of death, battle and sex. But she's not just a goddess of that. There are so many other aspects to her. And if you get that book, you'll be able to see the and understand the many different faces that she has. And um, also, as far as being a goddess of death, battle and sex go, a lot of people think, ah, should you really be worshipping a goddess of death? But that doesn't mean that you... You want to go around and kill people. It, it's <laughs> quite the opposite. And um, that, you know, I could sit here and talk at length for hours about why it's not to do with scary death stuff um, or, you know, working with the Morrigan. But we will be here for a very long time and it's not <laughs> easy to explain. It's just a journey that you kind of have to go on yourself. And she really calls you not the other way around you kind of just get drawn to her all of a sudden and if you never are drawn to her and there's lots of other pantheons of gods and goddesses to work with and you may never get drawn to any of them but if you do that's really cool um so yeah they're my new books and i just wanted to share them with you and you know give my opinion on them um I also have my hand fasting book, which I've shown you before from when I went to uh, Three Wishes Fairy Fest and I picked it up just before I witnessed the hand fasting. So that was cool. I had a little uh, timely intuitive moment. Um, and I've been looking into doing it because um, I, I would like to start performing hand fasting. So I've been looking through it. Um, and also it mentions hand fastings in here and it's got... Um, a rundown of a ritual as well so it'd be good for me to compare them both and uh, see what I can come up with. There's also um, a guy that got in contact with me and said that he'd be happy to help me out with some hand fasting stuff so that's really cool um, and when I get up and going with my hand fasting stuff I will be putting out info for you guys to try and book. Um, I still have a lot to learn I've, I've been told that the learning part is the easy part it's the studying and learning it all is easy it's the getting the gigs <laughs> um i will deal with that closer at the time i'm just taking this in my stride and making sure that i know everything because i don't want to turn up on someone's hand fasting day and bugger it up because that would be horrible um <laughs> which i won't do so yeah they're my new books um i've still been writing in my book of shadows the one that i made with the leather binding and i've shown you that before and it's over there somewhere um so yeah i hope that you guys enjoyed that and i hope that it gives you a little insight into books that maybe you weren't sure about if you've heard of either of them before or if you were you know wondering about certain uh pagan or Wiccan collection of books and I just hope that it was handy for you um like I said with this one this is really good if you consider yourself to be a Wiccan or if you're part of a coven if you're not either it's still good to have I'm not either and it's still really good to have but if you are I would definitely definitely suggest getting this if you're a Wiccan and you're looking into taking the Wiccan read get this and if you're in a coven get this if like I said if not get it anyway because it is good and it's handy to have it's a good handy book um but yeah so i hope you enjoyed that and enjoyed my ramblings and i know that i ummed and ahed a lot in this video uh sorry that it's late i i know it's actually probably about a month late i've been banging on about making a video for ages and didn't get around to it i've actually been quite poorly the past couple of weeks which isn't good but i'm better now so that's okay um so i hope you enjoyed that if you have any questions about uh where i got the books from um 
I might as well just tell you. I call them off Amazon, but if you want links to them, I can get them for you and um, write the proper names of the books and everything for you. Just uh, get in contact with me, either comment on my YouTube video, which this is, or comment on Facebook or send me a private message either, or I do not mind. Um, I'm still doing tarot readings, template reading. Um, I can do it via email, which is usually how I do it. Um, I will put, uh, I always do, but I'll put a link to the Facebook page in the drop down box below so that you can go on there and then private message me if you would like a tarot reading. I pull out nine cards all together and um, like I said, it's only £10 and I can give you a good thorough reading, um, the meanings of the cards and then my perception of it and what I think, which is what a tarot reading is anyway. And um, yeah, so if you would like a tarot reading, don't be afraid to get in contact with me. Um, I, I haven't worked with my scrying crystal for got to be about a year now. But I do want to actually start working with that again. So I might say, you know, if you have any questions you wish me to ask, I will do it. But I'm not going to charge for that because it's just, you know, a little bit scrying. But I tend to get a lot of right answers with it. So if you do um, want anything answers that you're a bit unsure about, nothing too specific or um, don't ask daft questions because you'll get daft answers. Um, but if there is something you would like to know and like me to scry for just private message me and I'll give it a whirl um yeah and if you want tarot readings get in contact um <laughs> hope you enjoyed my video sorry for the rambling positive energy and blessings bye